there's definitely been some ups and downs being in Alpha Chi. One thing for me, and I'm probably gonna talk about this a lot just cause it's like near and dear to both of our hearts is inclusion. So coming in, I definitely wanted to be part of a space that I felt was welcoming of all people of different identities. At the very least, like had conversations, you know, if they just don't have those demographics in the house. And so when I joined freshman year, my friend Sammy and I saw the need for some sort of um, board, uh, something along the lines of like DEI. So I started what was called a diversity committee, um, which was just me and a couple of our friends and we were under an executive position. Um, and we just did things like raising awareness um, about different identities, trying to buy for like speakers to come into our chapter and talk and stuff like that. Um, then we got sent home. After that, our chapter decided to take the committee and turn it into an executive board position. So the following year, I served as the our chapter's first VP of DEI, which sounds like it would be amazing and helpful and this awesome thing, but it was not. I guess it was just assumed that I would run. And I mean, I was interested in running, but yeah, I was kind of just ushered into the position because I was like the DEI person. I had already been giving presentation, DEI presentations that summer um, for the chapter and posting stuff and resources regularly. So I guess I just kind of like fit the role. I guess it was just I wasn't shocked, like it, was, it wasn't shocking to me that I'd be asked to do it, but it was like, okay, whose burden, whose job is it going to be to fix these problems? Oh, it's mine. Um, and of course, I'm like one of a handful of black women in the chapter. Um, so it was just kind of assumed, I guess, and I just became that person, I guess, for DEI. It was... It was definitely like, oh, okay. <laughs> I quickly learned that I, I think the type of person that is attracted to a lot of these spaces does not always care. Um, and I say this all the time, but you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. So I was forcing almost people to do things and care about things that they just didn't care about and it was really hard for me it was really hard Carly was on my board it, it was hard because they were things that were so near and dear to my heart but I could tell that my sisters like could not care less um, and aside from that I worked on the standards board as DEI so I really saw like every incident that had to do with race, sexuality, disability, like things would come to me first and I would be part of the board that developed creative sanctions for girls who messed up, I guess. So that's when I really saw what girls were capable of. And that's when, that's when it, it hurt the most when I served as DEI. I don't know who I would vent to or what I would do right. if I was didn't have Carly in the house with me. Right. Which, these are my, my sisters, so I'm supposed to feel comfortable around all of them, but they don't care enough to just even have that respect or decency. Mm -hmm. And it just is like every, every day. I came, I worked myself up to the point of like, I can't do this anymore. Like, this is not healthy. This is not a good environment. It's not safe. And I just don't want to be a part of something like this anymore. And getting to that point made me realize like all the things that I was missing out on, like expressing who I truly am 100% of the time. I hadn't done that since I came into college because I've been in the sorority for two years. So it's like, I'm just excited to learn about myself and be able to express myself. And, do that unapologetically. Like, I'm so, I feel like I'm about to step into freedom, so. <laughs> I made some really good friends. Like, not every 
person in that in Alpha Chi is bad. I have some really good friends who are like really good people, and I think those are gonna be the people that I talk to all throughout college and after college. But as far as like the whole sisterhood thing, I don't see the superficial relationships lasting because you know those are the girls who are, those are like the reasons why I'm dropping. So I don't see those really lasting. I would agree. Mm -hmm. I I would agree. Um, there's already been like relationships while I'm still in it that I'm seeing wither because I've decided to use my voice and use social media as a platform to talk about my experience in it and I already have girls who I worked alongside with me on the executive board sending me, you know, threatening text messages about me blasting the sorority on social media. So I, I think that it's definitely going to, to not be that support system, which it hasn't been anyways, so. You know, it's like, we're gonna come in, we're gonna throw around some flowery, flowery language, some buzzwords here and there. It's gonna sound like we're really woke and educated, but really, we want you to fix this problem because we don't have your perspective which you, that's true, but it, that doesn't mean like it's Ruth and I's problem to fix. But you know, that's kind of the expectation they have that they don't necessarily say, they kind of mask it as, let's support you, I wanna do everything I can, but tell me what that should look like and keep having these conversations you don't wanna have with me, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I wish I could say that these are the only incidences that happen, but that's just how things, that's how things run, at least with Alpha Chi Omega. Yeah, and PHA and IFC as a whole, it's a theme throughout.